morning, how are you today? Um, we're in, this in this video, we're going to go through the uh, basically introduction to the Scratch uh, IDE, Independent uh, Integrated Development Environment. Um, and we're just going to kind of walk through the main steps leading up to the points where you're going to make your own scripts. So this is a pretty good way in case, you know, following directions can be tricky or if you're not sure if you're following the directions correctly, uh, this video should help you get through all of that. <clears throat> so let's start with item number three, which is just to open up the Scratch project. Now, you and uh, your, at your school may have um, this particular um, program as the offline editor, in which case you will uh, still need, you. if you have that, you will have to, of course, download this into that. <clears throat> but generally speaking, you're going to just be best off running this in the uh, in the browser. So here's the deal. We're, we open this up, and in order to get the uh, green flag, we just have to get the green flag and then try to press the space bar. So the green flag basically is the run command. All right, It basically makes the program do its thing. So right now, all it's doing is moving that particular little floating head. If I hold down the space bar, though, it sends it in the opposite direction, and I can kind of go back and forth with that. All right. So that's kind of really the crux of the program. That's really all it does. So according to the directions here, now what we're going to do is um, read about integrated development environment. And remember, here in the PLTW curriculum in the Inkling documents, when we get vocab, we'll see the three dot dialog box. And we click that, and we can see what the and what the uh, definition is. So in this case, it provides a developer with a way to create a program, run the program, and debug the program all within one application. Many, not all, but many programming languages are IDEs, including the Python program we'll use later on in the course. So we'll click see inside now. That way, when we go back to this, we hit this, and it will now take us to a much larger screen, uh, including scripts, the stage or program stage, and also a sprite area. And then over here, these are our blocks. Our blocks are split up, sorry, our blocks are split up into 10 different categories. So there's blocks that cover motion, there's blocks for sensing, there's blocks for pens, for looks, and so forth. And we'll go through these blocks little by little. Today, you won't have to worry too much about the different categories of blocks. As we move forward in the assignments, you'll be doing more and more things with these. So back to the directions. Yeah, so there's your, there's your screenshot to kind of give you that rundown. Palette, categories, script area, and stage. And also, remember, anytime you are in the Inkling docs, if you click this magnifying glass, you can blow this picture up, and you can also zoom it in by using this top and bottom. Or if you're on, a, if you're on your uh, phone, you can just pinch the screen as well. That should also uh, pinch expand. So inside the project, you can create a picture of yourself as a new costume of the sprite or as a first costume of a new sprite. Select Costumes tab is shown and modify the sprite's costumes. So if we go to Costumes, here are the two costumes for this particular sprite. Now, if we want to do a new sprite with new costumes, we can hit a camera, or we can hit a camera here. And we can actually take a picture of yourself. So here, let's hit that button, and then we allow, and sometimes other browsers will have another one, but in this case, huh, they don't. So how you doing, everybody? So hit Save. Of course, I probably should have looked up when I did that. Um, let's try that again. Let's do that one again. Okay, let's get rid of that sprite. Right click, delete. Let's try it again, okay? We'll give that a shot. Actually, if I mouse, mouse is on the other hand. This way, there we go. Okay, so that's my sprite. Probably can cut my hand out of that. So we go to costumes. And there's the costume. And what I can basically do here is follow along the directions just kind of, we're kind of going back and forth, kind of what you would do here. If we had an image, we could import the image. Edit the costume with the costume editor using any of the tools. We could erase unwanted parts of the picture using the brush tool. And then we choose the transparent color. So if we go to brush and we pick the color here, and then let's widen it. Uh, and where's the thickness tool on this? There it is on the bottom, right there. You can make it bigger, so it'll be a little easier to erase more of the picture. So here, and then we can use the transparent tool, and we can kind of get rid of the rest of me, basically. And I can zoom in and kind of make it a little better, but just for the purpose of the video, we'll just do a quick rough edit here. Nothing, nothing too involved. Just kind of get my down to my nitty gritty here. There we go. Okay. 
So there we go. That's me. So now that costume's all set. Let's keep going. We could remove the background, draw as you wish for the picture. If you want to draw in your picture, you can. Pixel at the center of the image is going to be used for the XY coordinate of your entire sprite. It also is the location of the costume we use as a center of rotation if you rotate the costume. Make sure the image is centered by using the select tool and dragging the visible portion of the image into the middle of the canvas. So if we use the, what we're talking about here is, here's the select tool. If, I, uh, whoops, that's not what I wanted. If I grab this section, see the center right there? That dot is the center rotation for this, for this particular spot. So if I want to change it, I can move that around. I'm going to undo that, though, because I don't want to do that. So that's that. What else? Here, following information, you can make a duplicate costume that faces the other way. Duplicate the costume and reflect it along the x-axis. OK. So to duplicate a costume, we right-click, we select Duplicate. And there's our costume. Oops, what happened here? I don't know how that happened. There's two of me. <laughs> there's two of me. No. Let's duplicate this one then. There we go. Let's get rid of that. OK. Sorry for the headache. All right, so we got that. And we're going to mirror this particular segment here. So let's do that. To do that, we're going to go up to the right here. And we just click flip left and right. And there we go. So that's me. Other way. OK, and then if there's other ones, I already did that. You can right click and select delete. We can name it. So if I don't want it to be called photo two, I can right click it and select. Oops, I should be able to right click it. Oh, I'd have to do the sprite. Right click the sprite, excuse me, not the costume. Right click the sprite, select info, and then I can call this Mr. C. That's me. And then hit enter and go back. And there you go, done. OK, so that, part's, that part of the uh, thing is done. Now, we're going to take a look at the documentation just to kind of know where things are. Okay, So if you need more information, there is a presentation. See where I, I was just, I'll go back and show you what I mean. There is a presentation and a video in this case that goes over. Then it does it again. Placement. An if else structure, turn five degrees. An if else structure, turn five degrees and so forth right so we're not going to obviously watch this video within the video here but just to kind of show you that that is there for your assistance so there is a video that kind of walks through some of the uh techniques for placing blocks i'll go over a few of those in the context of this video as well so let's go back to where we were uh, help screens and reference guides we access by throughout venue by clicking either the question mark icons below or right click any blocks so let's say for example we're in scripts and i want to know what this one, point towards mouse pointer. If I hit help, help, excuse me, it then brings up this little tooltip here that shows you what that does and an example of how to use that. So anytime you're stuck with something and you want to know what it means, like here, this forever, what does that mean? Help. Forever means it runs the block inside over and over. Well, forever, right? And the nice thing about the scratch environment is for the most part, it's very self it's 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 very intuitive it's not you're not going to see fancy names for commands and stuff um it's a very good beginner level uh programming environment so let's go ahead and now create a script so every script belongs to one sprite or the stage and we've started you off with two scripts belonging to the face sprite you can right click a script or comment to delete it every script starts with a cap block and then proceeds one block at a time in the scripts tabs for your new sprite, drag blocks from the palette to the scripts area as shown here to create the script shown. Since each color block is color coded, you can always determine the category by any block shown. To delete it, drag anywhere to uh, the palette. Test the script by double clicking or creating the event described at the cap block here. Program a little at a time. Test frequently so you catch errors before they pile up. That's a good rule of thumb for every single program. So you notice that if I go to the face, this is all the face scripts, right? Well, this one here, this is the Mr. C script. There's no scripts for Mr. C yet. There are scripts for face. So if I run this program right now, if I run this program as it is, there's my, there's my sprite right, right now. I'd have to give a command to hide that. I'm not going to do that just now. But just to show you, there's the other one that was there, right? OK. So that's that. So now I want to create a script for, for this sprite, for the Mr. C sprite. And also on the stage, I can move its initial position by just doing that, and I can later put that back if I want. So I'll leave that there. 
And now let's go, what are we going to create? We're going to create an event script. If key space pressed, then change x by 10. That's what we're going to do. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to use in the event category. And notice again, just to reiterate, colors and categories are the same. So on the event one here, this is the when the flag is clicked. So this is, think of it as a trigger. When the flag is clicked. So what do you want us to do when we click the run command on the program, which is what this flag represents? And then, of course, the stop button to stop the execution of the program. So when it's in, and then we're going to throw in a Boolean expression, which, what's a Boolean expression? You click that, and you can see it evaluates if either true or false used in the conditional of an if structure. So in a Boolean expression, this is telling a program, hey, check to see if this is true, and if it is, do it. So here's our Boolean expression for if then. And then we're going to go, yep, and then we're going to add in a motion to change x by 10. And we're just going to keep it as change x by 10. Now, notice that there's still something missing here. We need an expression within here to be able to tell Scratch what is it that we would like to see if is true or not. In this case, it's the space key being pressed. So we'll go to our sensing tab, because that's the blue tab. And where is our key press? Not touching. There it is, right, key space pressed. That's the default. And notice that every key is represented. So if I wanted to change the key, I could make any of these keys. And there's even more options, right? So any lowercase keys, any of the numbers can be used, the arrows can be used, the space bar can be used. So we do that. OK, now I'm going to move this right over here. Now when I run this program right now, what happens when I press the space bar? Well, OK. So Let's talk about that for a second. Why did my sprite not move? Okay. What happens and why? Well, the problem is it's only checking when the flag is clicked. So if we don't loop this or have it constantly check, then unfortunately it's not going to work. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this off of here. And this is, see how we still have this block, but now it's not attached to any event, so this is not going to run. We're going to put it in what's called a forever loop. So we go to our control tab, and we'll drag the forever. And then we're going to put this inside. And now what happens is when I run this, if I press the space key, it now moves me to the point until I'm off the screen, right? And then also notice that the other one still runs that way too. You see that? OK. So if I put it in the forever loop, that's basically what happens with number 10, doing the forever loop, and now it works. And the last thing that we're going to do in this video is we're going to change this particular script so that it runs and switches some costumes as well. So to do that, let me go back to my costumes real fast and change the, let me see if I can change the name. Can I change the name? Yeah, I can right here. There's the name changed, right? So normal and we'll do reverse, right? So normal and reverse. Let's go back to our script. And what we're going to do is we're going to throw in a looks. And we're going to switch costume to, well, yeah, normal. And then we're then going to also make it so using an if else block. So we're going to go back to control. Let's see if we can replace this entire thing. I think we can. Yes, we can. So you see what I did there? Um, well, no, actually, I take that back. We can't quite do that. So I'm going to kind of just grab this and stick it in here and replace this like that. And see, it's all this is all mouse-based mouse, mouse -based stuff. I'm not hitting too much on the keyboard right now. I'm doing it all with my mouse. So an if-else statement, and this is another control block, basically, if this is true, do this. But we're also going to throw in what to do if it's not true. So if it's a false statement, what do we do? OK, so we're going to, in this case, we're going to change, and I believe the activity says change x by negative 10. Yep. So we're going to go to change x by 10, and we're going to go negative 10 instead. And then we're going to switch the costume, oops, not sound, switch the costume to normal. Okay? And then one other thing we're going to do, one other thing we're going to do, is we're going to turn, and you know what, just to be different, let's turn the other way and go by 5 degrees at a time. All right, if I can change that. There we go. OK, so now let's run that program and see what happens. So there's me, and there's our the costume change isn't happening, though, I noticed. That's because I have normal and normal on both. Oops. 
Come on, guys, you're supposed to catch that. <laughs> Just kidding. Run it. <clears throat> and now it see it does it does flip. And then also so notice that since the center, my center is not quite right in one of my sprites, it's kind of looks weird. It looks like I'm shifting position when I'm not. And also look look how I'm kind of rotating lopsided. So I have to later go back in there and kind of fix that. I'm, my, my sprite is not completely centered. So, you know, that's not the purpose of the video. We're just kind of looking at different things, how to use the program. We can see there's coordinates, and we can let you work on that. So at this point, though, this is pretty much your introduction to Scratch and how you're going to work with this. So there's, they're going to give you a nice little self-directed thing to use a few more Boolean operators, and then they're going to ask you to accomplish one specific task, you notice there's no help here, right? They give you a little bit of bug, they little debugging here, um, but they're gonna give you a specific task. In this case, modify your script so the sprite wraps around when it reaches the left side of the screen, okay? Now, there's a little bit around that, a number 13, to make it do that. So, you know, we're gonna let you loose on that for now, for this assignment. So hopefully this helps, and uh, if you have questions, of course, ask your teacher, or if you are in my class, you can ask me. Have a nice day, everybody. Don't forget to be awesome.